Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. And Hag Sameach. This is a festival, right? Right? Right. Leviticus 23, there are seven festivals. And this is one of them that happens every week. So do we hit that big refresh button on the screen? You know, I mean, this, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Nothing. Nothing. It might come in different shapes or forms or whatever, but there's nothing new under the sun. So God, was, God invented the original refresh button, Genesis 6. So welcome. We want to welcome people that are watching online, our extended family, our mishpacha in Hebrew. Uh, we are a Messianic Jewish congregation, and we're glad that you're here and a part of us. Uh, there's, a, there's just an excitement that I get when I come to the house of the Lord. You know, through those gates, I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise because we're here today to worship the Lord. He set aside one day a week for us to worship him, to live for him, to be a reminder. And there are reminders all over the place. But Shabbat is just one of those big reminders that happens on the calendar every week. Has happened for thousands of years. Uh, and we get to take a part um, in the kingdom, acknowledging the creator God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, uh, the one that did it all, the one that uh, from the foundations of the earth had a plan for your salvation and mine. Um, Yeshua was there in the beginning. Um, if you read John, First John, that he was there and he became the word that was written in the Torah and then fast forward a couple thousand years, maybe 1,500 years, uh, he became flesh. And he walked among us, um, the lamb that was spotless, uh, as an example for us. Uh, are we going to be spotless? No, no. We're in this flesh suit, so you can expect to fall. But in that falling, you can expect that God's going to give you the strength to get up. If you mess up, fess up, get back in the game. Um, we are looking forward to one day that we will be glorified in this body to, uh, you know, there's that, that process of sanctification, uh, but before sanctification comes justification and our sins were covered by the blood of Yeshua and it was, we were justified when we appropriate his blood over our lives, uh, then we are justified in a old old preacher used to say it's justified never done it you catch that justified never done it because the blood covers our sin and God can't see it anymore and then once that justification happens then comes the sanctification process we are being set aside to worship God and to to be in his kingdom on the road to heaven and that God, God could become more and we could become less. So he's given us this textbook, this uh, Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth. Um, there are acronyms all over scripture and there are symbols and types and patterns that you'll see repeating themselves all through scripture. You know, the heavens declare the glory of God. His very creation you know, we're in the midst of spring, you know, where the flowers are blooming and it's like, oh, wow, when we realize that God made those. You know, you don't think he smiles on creation when creation blooms? You know, oh, by the way, we're his creation too. And we get chances to bloom every now and then. You know, we go through seasons of summer, fall, winter, and spring. And that's when we can glorify God by the lives that we live. Um, there are opportunities I wanted to s share with you for our local body here in Macon that uh, when you look at where you spend your time, your talents, and your treasures, that really tells you where you are. You know, and if you're spending your time and your talents and your treasures 
in the body, ministering to the body, or reaching out to share the love that you have to people in the community, then you're doing what I think we were made to do. Um, living sacrifices is what Shaul said. You know, we're to be living sacrifices. And we're, it, the scripture is uh, Romans 12, be transformed by the removal of your mind. Um, renewal of your mind. Re- <laughs> Be transformed by the renewal of your mind, okay? I mean, I say that tongue-in-cheek because a lot of people say, okay, now I'm a believer and I don't have to think anymore. God made you with an intellect, you know, and it's when we put our intellect to work and we put all of our resources together that we glorify Him. And the opportunities that we have to serve in this local body are immense uh, from teaching the word to the toddlers in Shabbat school, to cleaning the toilets on a Sunday, to uh, working on the grounds outside. Um, the, the, the opportunities go on and on. And I would encourage you to listen to the word of God. And if God's tugging at your heart to get involved, uh, answer the call, pick up the phone, answer the call, and uh, find somebody that said uh, where you can plug in to uh, let your fruits Uh, be magnified and glorify the kingdom of God. Um, I'm going to read today a psalm, which is what we do. And I was lost in the middle all week, like, what psalm should I read? What psalm should I read? Should I read Psalm, you know, 86 or 40 or... 46 or 48, so I got down to between 46 and 48, and alas, what's between 46 and 48? 47, you know, so God just opened that up to me today, this morning, and I would encourage each one of you, I mean, there's preparation that goes on all the time, you think rabbi doesn't just get up here and and spew off the cuff, but there's lots of study, there's word study, and getting into the scripture, and understanding what the words mean. We read a translation, okay? This book that we call the Bible was not written in English. It was written in Hebrew. And so if you want to know the, the real meaning of what you're reading, You can get a a concordance in your Bible and go take it apart word for word. And oh, by the way, we just celebrated Shavuot a couple of weeks ago, right? And uh, what happened at Shavuot? What did Yeshua say when he left the disciples 10 10 days earlier? He said, go and wait. Wait until the Spirit comes upon you. In in Greek, it's the dudamos, the power. So now we have the Spirit of God in whatever measure you open up to, to interpret the the Scriptures. You're you're plugged in with the Spirit of God to the Spirit of God, looking for the author's intent that he had when he wrote the book and he inspired men to document the words. I mean, with this, we owe, we owe so much to our forefathers for preserving the Word of God so we can have it today. And we owe a lot to the people that have paid that ultimate sacrifice. Uh, last weekend was Memorial Day. And Memorial Day wasn't for the veterans that are serving right now. Memorial Day was a day to remember those that gave it all. One of the colors of the American flag is red. And red represents the blood and the blood that was shed and there's so many people that have died in this pursuit or defense of freedom that we have today in America and that the American culture is spread around the world of freedom and freedom that we have to worship the God that we choose and worship openly we don't have to hide in the basements like has, that is going on today in many places around the country. Every country is not free. 
Believers are not free to worship God openly everywhere, but we in America have been blessed with the freedoms to worship God openly because of the sacrifices that were made. So just, I mean, we take too much for granted. I, too, I take too much for granted. Does anybody, anybody relate when I'm saying we take too much for granted? I get in my car in the morning, I take for granted it's going to crank. There was a time when I was like very thankful when my car would crank. When you have one of those cars, you know, it cranks up and you say, praise the Lord. But there's so many things that we take for granted that we need to just step back and think that we have nothing that we were not given, that God's given us so much so much and that attitude of gratitude and that expression that we have to the almighty God thanking him for what he's given us thanking him for giving us salvation through his son Yeshua and that blood that was shed so we can have the freedom to enter in to a relationship with God so let me start by talking about who wrote Psalm 47 This is a, a psalm, it's for the leader, and it was a psalm or a song of the descendants of Korah. Now, if you're a student of the Bible, you may have already read the story about Korah. It's in number 16. Actually, the divisions of the Parsha, the Parsha of Scripture, there's a, an entire week set aside to study the life of Korah and what he did as a memory for us so we don't do what, what he did and we don't have happen to us what happened to him. Korah and his two buddies decided that uh, they were gonna be rebellious so they stepped up and they challenged Moses and it didn't go well for them. It did not go well for them. There were 250 more guys that brought their strange fire in their in their uh, in their tray in their shovels looking for the word but they uh, the, the the fire pans you know that they brought their alt their uh, sacrifice to the altar in you know and after Moses told them what was going to happen he said the earth's going to swallow you up because of your rebellion. And guess what? The earth swallowed them up. And then the fire came out and destroyed 250 of their cohorts. You know, they were lockstep. We don't like, we don't, we don't like this guy Moses. You know, we want to take over. And there's an exact punishment that God has for certain things. And he exacted punishment on those guys when the fire went out from the altar and consumed those 250 guys. You know, this is in the presence of all of Israel. You know, and it probably scared the hell out of some of them. Hopefully, you know, I mean, that's not a bad thing. If you get scared to a point the hell's gone, you know, then you're gonna be living a holy life a little better. But the memory of those 250 that were censors in the next it's chapter 16, number 16 and 17, Moses said, take those censers and beat them out, beat them out flat. And don't throw them away. He said, because they were holy. That implement that they were using was holy. And so he said, beat them out flat and put them on the altar of God. Why? As a reminder. God has a certain holiness can, that cannot be violated. And he gives us signs so we can remember what happened to those people that did the wrong thing. It sets us on the, right, on the right path. Like if it's a guardrail down one side, you know that, don't get on the other side of the guardrail. There's probably something bad over there. So, you know, stay, stay in your lane. You know, stay in your lane. 
so those censers were beat up and they were always on the altar so people that would continue to remember wow we serve a holy God who's very loving and gracious his mercies are new every day but there's a point there's a point that uh, when people attempt to take his glory that he may be patient for a while but then there's an exacting revenge that's going to happen so um, so we, we look at Psalm 47 and here we go this is a psalm of the descendants of Korah now God destroyed Korah's household at that time but he didn't destroy his children read the book it's in there I think it's numbers 26 okay my notes numbers 26 the sons of Korah survived he had mercy on Korah's descendants and they later became people that would write the Psalms and and they wrote this one and this one I'm gonna read the second verse first and then I'm going to go back and see if you understand wh where I'm going with this. For Adonai Elyon is awesome, a great king over all the earth. For Adonai. This is the reason. Verse 1. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with the cries of joy. You've been to a football game, right? You've been to a baseball game. Something happens. You stand up and clap, right? Is this more important than that? Let's try it again. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God and shout to joy. And when people ask you why you're excited, you can tell them, my sins are forgiven. I've got a path. I know what the goal, I know what the score is at the end of the game. It may not look like I'm winning right now. You know, we might be runs behind or touchdowns behind, however you want to put the analogy. But we know that God is in control and he has won the battle. And we're in his army. If you look at the word Adonai in, in verse 2, for Adonai Elyon is awesome. Adonai in Hebrew comes from the word master, Adon, Adon Olam, the master of the universe, Adon Olam. But the suffix in Hebrew that makes it possessive is the I. So Adonai means my master, or my Lord. So it's not just the Lord. It's not just the Lord, but it's possessive of my Lord, the Most High, is awesome. You know, I'm sure you've heard the, the, the talk about the word awesome and how all of a sudden it got hijacked. But awesome is a word that com it describes commanding respect or commanding fear. If God comes in the room, what are you going to do? He's going to Hey, God. Hey, bud. No, you're going to hit your fa hit face on the floor because it's in awe that we're in fearsome refer reverence of him and who he is and who we are in his presence. It's not pizza. Pizza's not awesome. It doesn't make you fear it. You know, you don't stand in awe of a 68 Camaro or whatever it is. But only God commands that respect, that fearsome Realizing how small we are and how big he is and how merciful he is towards us. He's the great king over all the world, over all the earth. He's the Melech Hadol, Hadol, the most high king. Talks about who's in charge, the ruler of all the earth. He makes people, this we're going to fast forward into this because this was written. 
5,000 years ago. David lived around 1,000 B.C. So this was written about 3,000 years ago. Some, some scriptures you could take literally for the day. Some are figuratively and some are prophetic. And when he said he makes peoples subject to us and puts nations under our feet, under our feet he can be speaking of times and seasons through uh, Israel, Israel's history. At the time of David, yeah, that was true. But then it hadn't been true from then to now. But we're looking forward to the time he'll do it again. And if he says it, he's going to do it. He chooses our heritage for us, the pride of Yaakov, whom he loves. The pride, the, something that you swell up with joy about. I mean, the people of Yaakov, the people of Israel, this is who we are. And he chooses our heritage for us. And then the, the psalmist adds, adds this word, Selah. And Selah is one of those words that says, stop, think, reflect. What did you just read? I mean, we're sitting here as, as subjects of the king in his kingdom. We know who he is, and we know who we are, and we know how he takes care of us. God goes up to shouts of acclaim. Adonai to the blast of the shofar. And the shofar is going to sound when Yeshua comes back. But the shofar announces the king. The shofar announces the king in a way that you, you need to understand. And our enemy, the one that doesn't have a social security number, doesn't know if that shofar is going to be the shofar when he announces show's over, game's over. So the announcement of the king on a shofar, but he rises on those praises that he ascends he engulfs, he, he rides upon the praises of his people. I mean, he enjoys people praising him because of the works that he's done. So what are you supposed to do? And we'll do this in a minute. We'll sing praises to God, we'll sing praises. We'll sing praises to our king and sing praises for God is king of all the earth. We'll sing praises in a masculine, which means we'll sing with understanding. For God rules the nations. He holds the hearts of kings in his hand. He sits on his holy throne. The leaders of the people gather together, the people of the God of Abraham, for the rulers of the earth belong to God, who is exalted on high. There, there's no God like our God. There's no God like our God. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you've preserved your word in a form that we can read and study and learn about you and learn what you expect from us. Father, we thank you so much for the, for the teachers, the pastors, the preachers, those that have given their lives and their livelihood to bring about your kingdom on this earth. We thank you so much for the blood that was shed, that ultimate sacrifice, that sacrifice of sacrifices. that we, through his blood, have a way of entering into a relationship with you. We thank you for this day that we could come into your house to worship you and to praise you and to just lift your name on high. For you are worthy. There's none like you. You're worthy of all our praise and then some. We just thank you. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen.